my name is Mia Foltz. I am a nurse in the medical ICU. I am going to do a presentation today on happy prevention in the ICU. So what are HAPIs or healthcare associated pressure injuries? HAPIs occur when impaired blood flow from inadequate repositioning puts excess pressure on bony prominences. This can lead to tissue damage and then eventual cell death. So there are other types of HAPIs, including mucosal or medical device associated injuries, but I'm mainly going to be focusing on the ones from poor repositioning today, such as those that occur on the sacrum or the bony prominences of the spine. So developing a happy during a hospital stay is considered an independent predictor of comorbidity and mortality. This is especially true of older adults. So I work in the medical ICU and we do see a majority of older adults. We also see people with poor skin integrity um, or open areas, a lot of moisture damage, which are other predictors of occurring a happy. Um, we also see people with poor sensory um, integration. So we'll see cerebral palsy or a spinal cord injury and really see a lot of people on who are heavily sedated. So these are all other factors that make it hard for patients to reposition themselves and more dependent on healthcare providers to reposition them. Additionally, we see people who are mechanically ventilated. This is another independent predictor of HAPIs. Um, we see vasopressor support often. So people on vasopressor support often have poor perfusion or poor blood flow. So this is another predictor of HAPIs and the medical ICU definitely sees a lot of these. So while hacks or healthcare associated conditions have decreased overall from 2014 to 2017, HAPIs have been on the rise. So hacks or healthcare associated conditions are anything that a patient acquires from being in the hospital which they shouldn't. So a CLABSI or a central line associated bloodstream infection, a UTI, urinary tract infection, or a fall, a thromboembolic event um, following a surgery. These are all things like a DVT that are considered hacks and they pose a huge financial burden for hospitals. And they are things that we as nurses can do something about. So we have the power to advocate for our patients for better protocols and technology that can lower these events and improve mortality or morbidities, comorbidities um, amongst our patients. So ICU patients in particular just have a higher rate of HAPIs and a lower adherence to turning protocols. Sometimes they're considered too sick to turn. So they're hemodynamically unstable or they have very critical airway and people just might not feel comfortable turning them. Uh, for this reason, we see even more HAPIs than we would on like a med surge floor or somewhere where there's less of um, a critical patient population. So what is a potential solution? A lot of facilities are now turning to technology. So the LEAF turning sensor is a wireless wearable patient sensor. It's kind of like a telemetry electrode and it sits above like your suprasternal notch. It can monitor the position, mobility and activity of your patient. So it's a single use little sensor and it lasts for about 21 days. So the average patient stays in the IC for five days. So it'll be good for the whole stay. And it can be used if a patient is prone, if a patient is uh, mobile enough that they can get up and sit in their chair or walk around. Um, it'll monitor all those things. So it's a good indicator of where your patient's at mobility wise, and it's a very innovative technology. So it uses a lot of visual cues, which is super helpful um, in the ICU, which is definitely like a teamwork environment. There's a centralized monitor and it displays the patient's turning schedules. 
uh, it's color coded. So there's green, yellow, red. Red means you're overdue for a turn. Yellow is your turn's coming up and green is you're like good to go. Um, you're on schedule for your turn. So by placing this kind of in a central location, I think it increases adherence to turning protocols by encouraging, if you're just sitting there and you have nothing to do, you can go help a patient um, who needs turned. Whereas traditionally, you know, you pop your head out and ask for a turn. Now you can kind of be proactive and see, oh, this patient who might not be mine is needs a turn. So it's pretty cool. Um, so I see patients have definitely unique needs. A lot of people can't tolerate the 30 degree turn, or maybe we are too intimidated to turn that patient. We don't think it's worth the risk of throwing them off hemodynamically. So the leaf turning sensor can adjust to this. You can go into the software and adjust the turning um, time in between the interval. And you can also adjust the degree. So research has shown that you just, you need to offload the patient for 15 minutes every two hours, but you can also do these 15 degree micro turns every one hour. And this also increases mobility and prevents skin breakdown. So each patient, depending on what they need, the software can adjust for that. In addition, if your patient turns themselves, the software will adjust for that as well. So it'll recognize that the patient has turned themselves. So you're not doing excess turns or if your patient, like many ICU patients do, don't like the pillows and they rip them out after you just got done repositioning them, the patient, the patient sensor will automatically update for that and the patient will be due for a turn sooner. So you just need 15 minutes of offloading to get some tissue perfusion and blood flow to that area. And the sensor makes it so that each patient gets that regardless of what their mobility needs are. So in a randomized control trial, this has been proven to show an 85% improvement in turning adherence, which is very significant. There's also a 70% reduction in sacral pressure injuries when using the leaf turning sensor technology. So this has great implications for patient. Not only are they going to have less happies, that means they'll have less incidences for infection. If there's an open area in the skin, there's a higher rate of bloodstream infections. If they're not being turned adequately, they're going to have poorer mobility overall. So this is something that can have great potential downstream effects for our patients. So some data I collected showed that a return on investment and investment with the leaf patient sensor was very significant. With just the leaf turning system, there was a cost of about $40,000. So this is um, a cost that you're taking in. How many happies were there? What are we paying for the instances of these happies? And what are we paying to implement the system? And there was a net difference that showed about $40,000. So even with the investment in the technology, we were still saving money because we were paying less for the actual happies. With just standard prevention protocols, we were paying a lot more because there were more happy incidences and this is a huge financial burden. So in the next graph, you can see how many happies there actually were and this data was factored in with the previous graphs data. So with just the leaf turning sensor, there were about 600 incidences of happies. Whereas with standard prevention, which would be things like moisture management, the Q2 hour turning protocol, and sacral heart usage in the ICU, there were uh, about 200 more incidences of happies. So overall, you can see that implementing this has great effects for even staff satisfaction because we can help each other using this technology. We don't need to pop our head out or maybe put on a call light to get help. You can see a patient's due for a turn and you can be proactive. You can also see there was a financial return as well as better patient outcomes. So this is definitely a useful technology that I think our medical ICU patients would surely benefit from. Here are some references that I utilized in this presentation. And thank you for your time. I appreciate you listening. When do I stop this? Mm -hmm.